What's up you guys, Rex here. So I'm a second year medical student at Duke University, which means I am done with all of the traditional in-classroom learning I will ever do in my academic career. And coming into medical school, I had 12 years going up to high school and then another four years in undergrad experience studying and having a perfect GPA 4.0 all the way through my entire academic career. But I still learned some significant things about studying this past year in medical school. So the first thing I learned is that people very often recommend study tips and strategies they don't actually use themselves. And in medical school, this became very apparent to me because everybody from the doctor you run into to your professor to your classmates to upperclassmen are going to recommend oh do this type of thing oh yeah this is a great idea i've heard people do this but so often they don't actually use them and that doesn't mean that it's a bad recommendation and one example is memory palaces that i have been recommended to like use a memory palace so many times and I've always asked the people, well, do you use a memory palace yourself to remember all these facts about medicine? And not one person has ever said they did. Now, that doesn't mean memory palaces are not incredibly effective. People that do memory competitions and are memory champions often use memory palaces to do it. It is evidence-based and highly effective, but people don't actually use it. So just take recommendations with a grain of salt that some people will give you a recommendation that they don't use themselves. It might be a great recommendation, but that doesn't mean you can't succeed without using their recommendation because chances are they succeeded without using their own advice. Number two, distractions matter even if you don't get distracted. And so I think this became apparent to me just because I was on Zoom University and so I was in my room 24 seven. And previously in my studying career through high school and undergrad, I would be fine like having my phone in my room and I wouldn't get distracted by it and I would get a text notification and I just ignore it. And maybe it was just because I spent more time that I found in medical school, even if I never like checked my phone, just having the phone in the room would decrease my productivity. And I think that was just because I was using some little bit of willpower and mental effort to avoiding the distraction than actually towards studying. And so sometimes, even if you don't get distracted by things around you, it can be highly beneficial to just remove those distractions, put the phone in another room, completely power it off, whatever your distraction might be, try to completely remove those distractions and you might find benefit from that even if you don't actually get distracted by the distractions and think you can willpower through them. Number three, Learning styles just don't exist. That is a myth that is not evidence-based whatsoever. I don't really know why it became so widespread that there is these learning styles. Some people are visual learners, some people are auditory learners, etc. But broadly speaking, that is such a myth in our educational culture in America. I assume it's worldwide, I'm not sure. But in America, growing up, you always hear, oh, make sure you are using the best learning style for you. Or if you're a teacher, make sure you're addressing the different learning styles in the room. That's just not true. That being said, learning style does matter, but more as far as presentation style goes. That there are different topics that I learned this past year that were much easier to learn by doing hands-on tactile stuff with models versus just watching and seeing someone write it out versus hearing someone talk about it. And I don't know how much that just depends on the person presenting the information. And so it might be more that there are just good presenters and bad presenters and good presenters use the style they are good at presenting with. And so it might seem like you have a learning style because you are used to having a teacher who presents information in a certain style and therefore you learn well and think that's your learning style, that could be it. But I found that it was much more topic dependent and the actual presenter of the information dependent than the actual learning style dependent of how I learned best. Number four, what works for you can be totally different than what works for your classmates. And so this is somewhat adjacent to learning style. And so I, when I'm saying this, I'm not talking about, oh, some people are visual, some people are auditory. I'm talking about some people will learn best in a textbook. I was kind of surprised talking to some of my classmates that they find it very good for themselves to literally just read the textbook. That is their best way to learn. Other people, they only use Anki. That is all they use. 
day in, day out, sunrise to sunset, they do Anki flashcards, they never watch a lecture. I found it very effective to watch a lecture. And that's okay. So going into medical school, I knew people learned in different ways and had different strategies. I think just in medical school that became more and more apparent to me, the disparities in what is effective for different people, just because you had much more freedom in medical school to be an adult learner who learns in your own way. You don't have to attend lectures if you don't want to. And if you wanna read the textbook, you can read the textbook. Everything was very optional. So it, there was more freedom for people to pursue the learning style that was best for them. And so that made it just more apparent to me that that statement is true. Different people learn in different ways. And lastly, number five, study time and performance on tests is not a linear relationship. And so what I mean is that if you study for twice as long, that does not mean you're gonna get twice as many questions right or half as many questions wrong. That in my opinion, there's definitely a logistic relationship in your performance on a test. So that means if you study for only just a few minutes, you're not gonna get many questions right. But then there is this sweet spot where you study a little bit more and you really start learning the material, but then you very much start to plateau where you might have to study for another 10 hours to go from a 90% to a 92%, and then you would have to study for the rest of your life to get from 99% correct to 100% correct. And so that was something that became much more apparent to me in medical school because everything was pass fail. So this was my first time where I was aiming for like an 80% on the exams rather than in high school and undergrad where I was aiming for 100% on the exams. So in undergrad and high school, I broadly speaking would get a 95 or 100% on every exam, no matter how much I studied. And so I couldn't have the time to actually gauge that relationship. But in medical school, I would get anywhere from like a, I think a 76 was my lowest exam up to like a 94% was my highest exam. And I definitely found that I studied different amounts of times for some of the exams versus others. And this did correlate to my performance on those exams, but I definitely found that much more important than time spent studying is how you are studying. That I found that I studied in different ways for different exams and that was much more predictive of how I did on those exams than just the raw hours I put into studying for a particular two week exam. So that was a really key takeaway that often the better predictor of your success on a particular exam is how you studied than how much you studied. So studying is definitely quality over quantity, but of course quantity has a quality all of its own. So you can just brute force it and study all the hours, but if you wanna be efficient, find most effective learning techniques for you. So those are five things I learned in my first year of medical school about studying and it is great that now my like traditional studying for an exam career is over. I still have board exams and stuff like that that I'll study for, but it is not a traditional, I have a class to take and I have to get grades in it and all that kind of stuff. Glad to put that behind me, but I definitely learned a lot of things along the way, and I hope that something in this video was helpful to you. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down below. I'll read and respond to every single comment. If you wanna catch more videos where I talk about my journey towards becoming a doctor or life advice in general to be the best person you can be, make sure you subscribe hit the notification bell. As always, like the video if you like the video, dislike the video if you dislike the video, and until next time, don't be ordinary, go be great.